Buckle up, we've got a date with a lipstick red Hemi Challenger. I'm going to go on record saying that I really, really dig this car. I mean, this is a 1971 Dodge Challenger RT 426 Hemi car in bright red, white top, white interior. What's not to like? Uh, but I also think I've got a special connection with this car because I believe I had a Matchbox car version of something very similar. It didn't have the shaker hood, but it was a red and white Challenger, and I remember playing with that as a kid. It's just over the top on how cool this thing is. They only made 71 of these for 1971 with the 426 Hemi. Most of those were manual shift cars. This one's actually an automatic, which makes it a little bit more rare. And some people might say that, you know, the four speed's more fun to drive and, you know, more fun to street race. But as I look at this car, I don't know that this was a street racer type mentality. We tend to project personalities out of these cars. And, you know, everybody likes a sleeper, something that makes a lot of power, goes real fast, but kind of flies under the radar. Well, you're not going to do that in this car. First of all, it's code FE5, which is bright red. And man, is it bright red. And of course, the RT package provides a stripe kit. And on the side, we have a white RT stripe and the brightly colored white vinyl top. So this car, I think, was meant to be noticed. You know, whoever bought this car is somebody who's looking for attention. And they're gonna get it if this car is parked and not running because of the way it looks. And of course, they're gonna get a lot more attention when they fire up that 425 horsepower, dual four barrel fed, 426 Hemi. It's reported that they made 71 1971 Dodge Hemi Challenger RTs, and you'd think that more people would have wanted a car like this. But by that time, the high insurance premiums were starting to catch up with cars like this. So these Hemi cars could have been two or three times more expensive to insure than the 383 or 440 cars. This car was slightly restyled for 1971. The grille changed a little bit, but it still retains the very tightly fitting front bumper. But of course, the big thing is the black shaker hood scoop. The base hood on this car was called the Power Bulge, which had a slightly different scoop. The option was the shaker, which of course mounts directly on top of the engine, and it vibrates when you start the car. That's why they call it a shaker. I think it's about the best looking hood scoop ever to be put on a muscle car. The RT styling continues down the side of the car. We've got a very thin wheel lip molding, there are no rocker moldings on this car, but on the quarter panels, you have the simulated rear brake ducts uh, in front of the rear wheel, and of course, the RT stripe package, which goes front to back. And it's interesting to note how that RT stripe works with the vinyl top and the rear wheel arch, and it all kind of harmoniously comes together at the back of the car. The tail pan is blacked out. You have a nice fine piece of trim surrounding the tail pan area and the tail lights. This one has the optional dual exhaust and the chrome exhaust tips that protrude through the lower valance panel. So from any angle, this car has cool little details suggesting that it's a performer. This particular car is still riding on a set of Goodyear Polyglass GT tires. Now the front are F60 15s and the rears are G60 15s. The rears are a little bit wider than the fronts. And sometimes you see Polyglass and sometimes you see Polyglass GT. And the big difference is that the Polyglass was a 70 series tire. The Polyglass GT is a 60 series tire, which was a slightly lower profile designed to give better cornering. This car is also wearing a pair of chrome plated sport mirrors, both on the driver and passenger door, which continues that racy look. The interior is just acres of white. I think it's very cool looking, especially with the white vinyl top. 
This car has the optional high back vinyl bucket seats. The dashboard is fitted with the rally gauge pack, which gives you a 150 mile an hour speedometer, an 8,000 RPM tachometer, a four pack that has a fuel gauge, temperature gauge, uh, voltmeter and oil pressure gauges and then it's got an interesting clock that has the hours and minutes kind of called out in two different rings so at first glance it can be a little bit confusing but that is just a clock but of course the big star of the show is the 426 Hemi V8 and Chrysler did such a great job of showcasing these engines when you lift the hood because they painted the inner fenders and the firewall all body color in this case, that bright red, so the engine really stands out when you pop the hood. The Chrysler 426 Hemi is a physically very large engine. In fact, they called it the Elephant, and underneath this big shaker hood scoop is a pair of four-barrel carburetors. And although the cubic inch displacement at 426 isn't the biggest V8 Dodge made, because uh, they did make a 440, the difference is in the cylinder heads. The 426 cylinder heads are hemispherical combustion chambers which flowed a lot of air. So the difference is where a 440 got by with a single four barrel carburetor, the 426 Hemi needed two. Although the condition of this car is unbelievable, I'm guessing it had some miles put on it, judging by the black tape on the seal that holds the shaker scoop to the bottom of the hood. These things don't wear out on their own and somebody repaired it with some tape. So I'm gonna guess this car has been driven pretty hard at some point. These Hemis made 425 horsepower and 490 foot-pounds of torque through the dual four barrels. Uh, just a high revving, free breathing, big block engine that was a ton of fun to drive. I noticed something on this car that I hadn't paid attention to on other Hemi cars. There's a vehicle emission control sticker on the inner fender and it shows the idle setting at 950 RPM in neutral, which meant it probably came down to 850 or so when you put in gear. Uh, the timing is set to two degrees before top dead center, but there's an air fuel ratio mixture called out on the sticker uh, from 14.0 to 14.4 to one. Today, modern electronic fuel injection systems constantly sniff the exhaust and adjust the tune to get a proper air fuel ratio. Getting that right on a dual four barrel 426 Hemi back in 1971 would have been a little bit of a trick. And uh, I'd be curious to see the instruments they used to measure the air fuel ratio back then. But nevertheless, it's called out on that sticker. Pretty cool. This isn't the only 71 Hemi Challenger in the Brothers collection. In fact, we've previously featured an unbelievably rare 71 Hemi Challenger convertible, and that's on our website at musclecartheweek.com. Go ahead, look it up. And while you're there, sign up for our email newsletter so you'll always be up to speed with what we're doing here at Muscle Car of the Week.